So this is the part of sound off where we compare the stock speakers with the new speakers that we're going to be putting in. We're not only going to be doing a little bit of a weight measurement across the board so we can just see side by side what each product weighs, but I'll be talking you through exactly what the differences are between the new speakers and what you get from a stock Audi RS6. <laughs> So to start with, I'm going to give you a brief overview of all of the products here, and then we're going to go narrow down and go down to each individual component. Starting off, we've got the stock system. So what does that comprise of? That comprises of a tweeter, a mid-bass, rear speakers comprise of the same, a tweeter and another mid-bass. Then you've got a designated sub in the vehicle as well. But what are we going to be putting in? We're going to be adding and replacing the tweeter, mid base, but we're adding a three inch mid range into the front doors. So that is something that's not in the car currently. So we don't have something side by side to compare to. Then we're gonna be upgrading a two way set in the rear. So new tweeters and mid bases, and we're gonna be upgrading the sub, plus adding a new amplifier and a little gadget called an LC7i, which we'll walk through a bit later on. So that's a bit of an overview of what we've got from the car currently. And now let's talk about each product side by side. So the tweeters to begin with. So this deals with the higher frequencies. On top of the dash, this is what you find. So the factory tweeter here comes with a little plastic housing, which obviously bolts down on top of the dash in the corner. The new tweeter that we've gone for is the Audison Voce component. We're gonna be 3D printing an adapter that looks very similar to this that can bolt into that same location, meaning it's fully reversible. But that's a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. But there's a little sticker on this one. So this is a factory component. So it's a four ohm component, which is the same as this. Ohms is basically the language uh, of a speaker, uh, is the simplest way to explain it, but we'll put a little description of what ohms is down in the description below for those people that want to learn a little bit more. The little sticker on here about watts. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about wattage uh, and power throughout the whole episode here. This has a peak handling of 20 watts. This component, the Audison Voce, can carry 180 watts. So 20 watts versus 180 watts as a peak handling that this product can take. And that just by itself should tell you kind of the quality difference that you're getting with a Voce component. But let's do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. Obviously this does have the plastic housing, which obviously does have weight to it, but let's measure that in. So that weighs in at 92 grams. This Voce runs in at 73 grams, so it does weigh less. So how can this Audison Voce component take more power than this one, but it weighs less? That is mostly down to the magnet design. So this has what's called a ferrite magnet, which is quite a dense style of magnet and very heavy, whereas this uses a neodymium magnet, a lighter manufacturer designed magnet that is specifically designed for car audio, especially, and is used pretty much across the board, across decent high-end car audio products. So obviously with a comparison between two products. Later on in the video, we're gonna be obviously listening to the car, you'll hear before and after, and that's obviously where the main difference comes. But when designing a product, when a manufacturer like Audison designed this particular product, for instance, every single part has been thought about with quality and also car audio in mind. So Audison as a manufacturer, they are been over to a factory in Italy, all they do is manufacture car audio products and have done for a very, very long time. The level of detail they go into when manufacturing it, I've met with their engineers themselves, phenomenal team. Every single part of this component is literally thought about. From the disbursement of sound out of a component, the way the grill is designed on here is all designed with car audio in mind and how to kind of sonically get the best possible frequency range and response and sound quality through into a car. So a lot of the time these are mounted on display, so they have to cosmetically be quite pretty, whereas that factory one is hidden, doesn't look that great. But they've not really thought about sound here, they've more thought about cost 
and also just how they can fit it into the vehicle and make it multi-car purpose. So this is designed to obviously fit in multiple other vehicles as well. For instance, an Audi A3 might have the same component in here. And then the RS6, we know in the Lamborghini Aventadors, you get the same speaker as an Audi A1. And this is where they design the bracket tree, they design the whole speaker to fit across multiple cars. Why? To bring overall costs down and make more money. That is generic across all car manufacturers, whether you're buying a Rolls Royce, where you get a BMW 1 Series speaker in it, or you're buying an Aventador and you're getting an Audi A1 speaker system in it. So that is all designed around lowering cost, whereas a car audio manufacturer like Auditon, they are not too bothered about costs. I mean, these retail in at £160 or so for the set themselves. I mean, the cost of this, I'd imagine, is probably around about a couple of pounds. It's honestly, the difference is massive. And that is why the difference in sound quality also comes when you're investing into better materials, a proper design engineer to go through and build a proper product for sound. So the car itself, and we'll pop up a little diagram to the side here. The Audi RS6 that we've got doesn't have the Bang & Olsen system from stock. So all it comprises of is a two-way front end, two-way rear, and the designated sub. Now what we're gonna be putting in is a three-way front end, two-way rear, and the designated sub. So we're adding a mid-range in. So I'm gonna just talk, talk briefly about the mid-range here. I can't compare this to anything because there is no stock factory mid-range in the car. The grille is there. It looks like there is a speaker in there, but there definitely isn't. Uh, and that is why we're gonna be adding in the mid-range. What the mid-range does is it basically sits in between a tweeter and a mid-bass driver. And what it does is it kind of gives you a bit more separation of sound. It makes things a lot smoother and it takes a strain off each of those individual components. Plus when we're tuning the system, because we're running what's called fully active part of the processor, I'll explain that in a bit. What that actually does is it gives us the ability to control the sound a lot more. So quite a vital part. Obviously not every car has the ability or space to be able to add a mid range in, but this car does, so we're gonna be changing over those grills, getting ones with holes in them, and then adding in the mid-range. So this is the Audison three inch Voce mid-range completing the Voce three inch set. Over now to the mid-base driver. So this is actually quite interesting because on the Audi RS6, you actually get this speaker. So this is very similar to a Lamborghini Euro speaker as well as an Audi A5 speaker. So the actual component itself, it's got basically a full plastic structure. So all the support beams that you've got all the way around are all made out of plastic. When it comes to lower end frequencies, you see here in comparison to the Alderson Voce, where it's got a far more solid metal structure. When you're dealing with mid-bass frequencies or lower frequencies rather than say, for instance, a tweeter, the actual structure and how solid everything is makes a hell of a difference. You get a far better lower bass response when something is either bolted down to the vehicle or it has a firmer structure. Having this cheap plastic structure just isn't really great for sound and obviously just is just very cheap. Also, the cone itself is a paper cone by the look of things, and also, again, using quite a small ferrite magnet. So the Audison Voce component that we're putting in, swap it, again, this uses a neodymium magnet, but what is the actual difference between a ferrite and a neodymium magnet? The neodymium magnet, basically what it is, is it allows in a smaller space than a ferrite magnet, a larger magnetic field. So basically it can perform a lot better and especially in car audio, that's really important because we are limited on space. But the actual cone itself, for instance here, the Audison Voce is a six and a half inch mid-base, whereas here I believe this is either a seven or eight inch mid-base driver. But this is still gonna produce more mid-base in the car. Reason is because of the structure and design work that it has. Then we're gonna be leaving the sub and the lower frequencies down to the designated sub that we're gonna be adding. And we'll do a little bit of a comparison between this and the designated the sub a bit later on. But let's do a little bit of a weight comparison. Obviously this has got that plastic structure around here. So let's pull this down. So this is the stock front speaker of the Audi RS6. So that weighs in at 661 grams. Then if we pop the Audison Voce on, that weighs in at 1,199 grams. 
So you can tell there, a massive difference in weight, the sheer size of this magnet, and obviously the metal structure, the um, press paper cone that this uses, is makes such a difference to weight and also performance inside a car. So even though we're gonna go for a smaller component, that also is still gonna give you massive mid-base performance and far, far superior than what this is. The other reason why we're using a six and a half inch mid base is because a lot of other vehicles use a six and a half inch mid base rather than a seven or an eight, which means that the system again can be reversed. So we're going to be 3D printing an adapter that will allow us to be able to put this in to that stock location so no damage done behind the scenes. But one really important thing again is it can be moved from car to car. We're not limiting ourselves by using a seven or eight inch mid base driver on this occasion because it can move from car to car and your investment in the Alderson Voce range, for instance, or any speaker system can move and that investment then stays for the rest of your life, which is absolutely incredible. And the way we've designed every single one of our systems. So that's enough for the front end. So we've got, just to recap, you've got the Voce tweeter, Voce mid range, and then the Voce mid base in the front. And that's all gonna be running fully active. Over to the rear speakers. From factory, you get basically a two-way set. You get a tweeter and you get a mid-base. Slightly different from the front end though. So this is the rear component uh, for the tweeter and then that was the front one. So in essence, I think it's actually quite, it's actually bigger in terms of the actual tweeter magnet itself and the tweeter itself. Uh, probably just because we've got a little bit more room to play with, uh, but obviously no plastic housing to, to go around that. But same thing again, a four ohm component with a 20 watt max power. Just, you're never gonna be able to get a serious amount of power down this thing. And the reason is, is because of how cheaply it's made. So let's do a little bit of a weight comparison between this and the Audison Prima tweeter that we're putting in. So these are from the Audison Prima range, which is the P, which is like the higher performance at the Prima range. This is actually an eight ohm component with a peak power handling of 150 watts rather than 20 watts from the Audi R6. So that sits on there at 85 grams and the Audison uh, Prima P tweeter is 69 grams. So just as a side-by-side -side comparison, the Prima P tweeter, yes, it does weigh less. Yes, it is physically smaller, but same thing as the front components here. There's a massive difference in actual power handling that this component can have over the factory RS6 speaker. So that's gonna be for rear fill for the tweeters. Now moving over to the mid-base drivers for the rear doors. So this is the stock mid-base driver, very similar to the front mid-base driver, just a lot smaller. So this sits into stock location, obviously, and we're gonna again be 3D printing adapters so the new Prima P component can sit into space. Already, the Prima P tweeter is gonna be a lot heavier, I can already tell that, but same thing as the front. Cheap, cheap design, plastic structure. I won't repeat myself, but in essence, pretty much everything that we've covered already, same thing here. But let's do a bit of a weight comparison. So these are the rear speakers of an Audi RS6, 520 grams. Over to the Prima P's, 1,375 grams for the mid-base driver. I mean, look at, the, look at it. It's absolutely phenomenal. And these for the whole set retailing at 230 odd pounds for two tweeters and two mid-base drivers. And just look at the difference you're getting for that money. There's no way any factory system, so whether you have Bang & Olsen, whether you have Harman Kardon, nothing comes close to an aftermarket set of components. It makes a hell of a difference going down this route. So that's a bit of a comparison of all of the components. But now what I wanna to talk to you about is a bit of base. So this car actually comes with a designated sub from factory. So here we have, I'm probably not gonna do a weight comparison because my scales might break on this, but let's talk to you about base. So right here, we have the factory sub. Quite a, quite a big item, you might think. And this actually sits underneath the factory floor. So you don't see anything. There's no space taken up and you're thinking, yeah, great, I've got a sub in my car. Massive, massive base. Let me just show you something. So I'm just gonna undo, undo these and I'm gonna show you something that uh, may shock you. So this is a two ohm sub and this has a massive, massive power uh, that you can send this. So these components here, you could send 20 watts to. 
So the factory Audi RS6 sub can handle 40 watts. Yeah, that's, that's rather embarrassing. So I'm gonna take this off and the big reveal, your big, big sub in your boot is smaller than the rear speaker. So that is your factory sub. So the rest is just a box. That, literally your rear speaker is bigger than the factory, factory sub. I mean, oh, I can weigh it as well. Cool. Let's weigh the factory sub. And this, I believe, is the same sub that you get when you spend the extra and buy Bang & Olsen. I'm pretty sure it is identical. So I will check the part numbers after the video just to confirm, but I'm pretty sure this is exactly the same sub that you get. So let's weigh this in. 693 grams. I'm just gonna take you back to the rear speakers that we're putting in. 1,377, 692. So I don't think I really need to say any more than that plastic structure. Just, yeah. The sub we're putting in is the Audison Prima 10 inch active sub. <laughs> right, we can weigh this. So this sub weighs 9,000, 9,003 grams. That's a bit of a difference. So this does have its own internal amplifier driving it, but this is a 10 inch sub. So this is the factory sub. You can see the size difference here. So yeah, that, it's pretty self-explanatory. That is gonna produce a hell of a lot more bass. But you might be thinking, well, yeah, but this is brilliant because it is hidden. You don't see it. What we're gonna do with this is pretty special. So there's gonna be a full install video of how we do this, guys. So make sure you go check out that video. But this sub is also gonna be placed in the same location as this thing. So this sub is gonna be removed and we're gonna be putting this in exactly the same location. There is gonna be no space taken up in the car. Everything is gonna go behind stock locations. Everything is gonna be fully reversible. Everything can go back to stock for the next owner. You can move your investment to their next car. And honestly, I don't think I need to say any more here, guys. This is gonna be absolutely mega. So now moving on to these little gadgets. So this little thing is called a Skins Water Guard. What this actually does is it sits around the speaker adapter and around the speaker. And what it does is it protects moisture from landing on the back of the speaker. And we include this in majority of cars that have what's called wet doors, where in essence, rainwater, and in this country, it rains a hell of a lot as it's doing right now. The rainwater drips through from factories, just a factory design of the way a door card is built. But water drops behind a speaker and over time it can kind of lessen the life of a speaker. The factory components don't really care because they're so cheap to replace and manufacturers don't really mind. But aftermarket speakers aren't cheap and they also deserve the respect of being looked after by little products like this. They don't cost a lot, but they make the life and lifespan of a product last a lot longer. The reason why we also use these sorts of products to protect these products is because we offer a full lifetime warranty on our install and products and adding little things like this make a hell of a difference and that's why clients travel all over the UK, all over the world to us to have their installs carried out, just like we carried out an install and make sure you go watch that, it's a really good video uh, if I do say so myself. It was on a Alfa Romeo 4C that came over from the States, we'll pop a link in below. Um, literally came over to us just for the install, but that's that product. Now we've got two more to do. So I'm not really gonna weigh these, but I'm just gonna talk you through what each one does. So we have the amplifier and processor and then something called an audio control LC7i. What this product does is it sits in line. So for example, you have the factory radio here, goes into an LC7i, 
goes into an amplifier with a processor, then that distributes sound to the actual components themselves. With all of our systems like this RS6 owner, he wants to use the system as he did with no change. He doesn't want to be having extra bits and pieces here and there, not being able to use Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and use that lovely factory media system that you've got in the brand new Shape Audi RS6. So these products are really important. First of all, the LC7i, what does that actually do? A couple of things. What it does is it allows us to sum signals. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but what it does is we can put in a multitude of different speaker signals. For instance, a front left tweeter, front right tweeter, rear mid bass, rear right mid bass. We can input lots and lots of signals into here. So what it does is it gives us a full range output. So with that giving us a full range output to the actual amplifier itself, it can then distribute exactly the signals we want and the frequency ranges we want to the new components. So the other really cool thing that the LC7i has is something called AccuBase. So from factory, again, where they're messing up the frequencies or via software, what they actually also do is they limit base output to your factory sub to the actual components in the doors because door cars rattle like mad and also the components will end up blowing if they send a full range signal to them. So what this actually does and a part of AccuBase is in essence we set this up and it's quite a complicated thing to set up but what we do is we recreate the factory curve. So for instance uh for instance on here. So as you as you turn up your volume, you're expecting all of your frequency ranges, high and low, to increase. So as you go from low to high, as you're scrolling up, that volume increases. You're expecting your bass to increase, your treble, all of the frequency ranges together to go up alongside. However, that doesn't happen anymore. Your factory system limits this. And what it does is as you turn up your volume, what actually happens is a as the curve for your bass response, for instance, actually tones off around halfway and drops down. And what that does is, in essence, makes it sound awful. Hence why the car is now here. What AccuBase does is it allows us to recreate that curve, and what it does is we can push that up, so as you're increasing the volume, your bass increases, your treble increases, and that is all part of the AccuBase technology. So that is a bit of an overview of what the LC7i does. Now moving on to this. This is basically the brain of the system, the processor, and also the power of the system. How sound actually gets delivered into a car. So we've got signals coming from the factory radio into the LC7i, LC7i into here. So it's got an input stage and an output stage. Speaker signals go in from a full range signal, clean, corrected signal from here using AccuBase technology. That then goes into the processor. The processor is vital. What it actually does, and in the install video, which is a separate video, we actually go through this in a bit more detail. The tuning system, so so as we set up the car, all the speakers are installed. The actual setup that we do is all done via a computer. We put on the program, we analyze the car using six internal microphones, analyzing the sound, analyzing where speakers are located, and doing what's called full time alignment, so moving sound around the vehicle without reducing volume, with using basically an increase in time and speed in which each speaker plays to be able to land at you as a perfect listening position accurately. So that's all done via something called BitTune. So six microphones set up inside the vehicle, acoustically listening to that interior, clearing all of the defects from factory and taking into account an interior of a car. Obviously you've got steering wheels to one side and you don't the other, and that does affect sound. So that is all done via the software. Then what we do is listen to the car by ear and fine tune it and bring in that warmth of sound and make it far more personal. Then what that does is it outputs that really nice, clear, corrected signal over to the new components, which obviously are far superior as you saw earlier. Then the factory components so they can handle what we're giving it. We then set all the clipping points. We set all the frequency ranges that we want going to individual components. And that is in essence is how we create sound. This will also be mounted underneath the factory floor. So you're not going to see this, but 
This in essence is the powerhouse and also the brain of the system. So hopefully you've seen a whole overview of exactly all the components that are going into the RS6 and also seen a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of what you get when you buy the level of car like an Audi RS6 and to be honest, how disappointing that can be. But not to worry, it's in safe hands. But now let's go jump in the car and have a sound test. So the RS6 is complete and what a journey it's been. The car, well, looks exactly the same. There's no cosmetic differences at all. Everything is hidden behind factory grills. There's even the sub, even the amps, everything is hidden. So no loss of boot space and everything is completely out of sight, but there's a massive difference and that's to do with the actual sound. So I'm now using Apple CarPlay fully wirelessly through the lovely, lovely interior that we've got in the RS6. So I'm gonna play a couple of tracks. Hopefully this comes across well on camera, so grab your headphones, guys, but have a listen to how insane this system sounds. just it's just absolutely mad like the difference from how it came in how flat it was just how boring it sounded in here to now is phenomenal and one of the nicest things for me about this system is that you can't see it everything's hidden plus it just sounds incredible so hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and thank you very much for staying right to the very end and actually appreciating how good this system sounded and I hope it came across on camera. Remember guys, if you ever do want to listen to a system, feel free to come in, book a consultation via our website. I'm more than happy to go through everything with you in a load of detail. Come in, listen to a proper system yourself and honestly, your world will be transformed. You'll be able to hear the differences in music where, where just before you wouldn't have been able to. The detail, the clarity is exactly how the artist kind of imagined it and wanted it to be heard. And that's what you get with a system like this. They literally give you goosebumps. It's incredible. So thank you once again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you on the next one.